into this this morning first with a brief word of prayer and then get ready, get ready, get ready, exposing the enemy, securing your victory. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now and we thank you for the power of your word, that it is indeed living and powerful and sharper than any, any two-edged sword. We're grateful, God, for your word that, that is our strength, it is our encouragement, it, it is our true north. It is what we hold on to to navigate through life. Mm. Now, Holy Spirit, we pray that you would come and that you would make the word alive to us, that you would help us understand it and that this word would fall on good soil. Mm -hmm. God, we don't want it being stolen by the enemy. We don't want it being choked out or mm -hmm. strangled. We don't want it um, going by the wayside in any way, shape or form. God, come now. Holy Spirit, come now, teach us, guide us, lead us into all truth, we pray in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. All right, so, beloved, exposing the enemy, securing your victory. Today is gonna be introductory. We're, we're gonna get into it a little bit, but we have to lay a very, very firm foundation. So let's get into this this morning. I know it's not just in, in mine and Sarah's life where we see spiritual warfare on the increase. Just look around our nation, beloved. Look around and see what's happening in culture. That, that's not just happenstance. That's not just people being stupid or ungodly or wicked. Like, we've got to understand the source behind that. It is the devil himself. It is the devil himself. We're going to see so much in here today and really throughout this week where you're going to realize, listen, the devil is alive and well. He is waging war and working. And if the saints of God don't wake up and start paying attention and fighting him in a way that's going to give us victory, man, we're gonna miss out. We're gonna miss out. So we're gonna give you a very balanced and biblical approach to spiritual warfare. We're gonna unpack this amazing story from the Old Testament. And I really, really believe that it's going to touch your life in, in a big way, okay? Now, um, we're gonna show you um, what you need to know, what you need to do, and what you need to not do mm -hmm. in order to expose the enemy and secure your own victory. And so um, this is like note-taking time. Now, today we had a problem getting our notes out, but we'll get them out to you tomorrow and, and throughout the rest of the week. But man, take notes, yeah. please take notes. Mm -hmm. Like just don't listen, take notes and let this get deep inside your spirit. Now, when it comes to spiritual warfare, most of us are familiar with the fact that, you know, the devil causes sickness and disease. And, and uh, you know, of course we pray against that and we pray for God to heal. But I, I want to point out this fact, and I know you're familiar with it to some degree, but there's more coming in the future, I promise you. God's word promises us. Can I just tell you, the devil works through people. Mm -hmm. Can I get an amen from somebody? The devil works through people. He works through people in the church. He works through people outside of the church. Mm -hmm. He works through atheists and agnostics. He works through people who sit in church on Sunday mornings mm -hmm. and play the part but then privately and secretly and seductively, they're causing division and mishap and turmoil and backbiting and gossiping. I'm telling you, the devil uses people inside and outside of the church both. Mm -hmm. And you better start paying attention more yeah. because the things that, the, that Jesus said about the end times, relationally, it's all about people. Mm -hmm. It's about people hating one another, betraying one another. That doesn't happen overnight. That happens as people yield themselves to satanic influence. And again, I'm sorry to say, it's inside the church mm -hmm. as much as it's outside the church. And it's, it's bad and it's wrong and you, you gotta start paying attention to it. All right, so here we go. Let, let's get into this story about King Hezekiah. King Hezekiah, his name means Yahweh is my strength, or Yahweh strengthens. What a, what a great name, King Hezekiah. So he's ruling about 700 BC, you know, 715 to 685. So, so right in there, average about 700 BC. 
He's ruling and reigning in Judah, okay? And um, Isaiah and Micah are prophesying at this time. Now, the thing that I really love about this particular story we're gonna look at, we get it from three different passages of scripture. You're gonna see 2 Kings this morning. You're gonna see 2 Chronicles this morning, but also the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 36 and 37, which we'll get to later on in this week. But we're gonna unpack the story of an attack that Hezekiah, king of Judah, went through. This is like this consolidated, concise, play-by-play -play book of Satan's strategies and what he does. And so as we look at it and unpack it, it exposes his antics, and then we know how to properly respond so we can secure our victory. So let me read this to you, 2 Kings chapter 18, verses three through eight for a little bit of background here. Speaking of King Hezekiah, it says, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father David had done. Listen to this. He removed the high places, which were places of pagan worship. He broke the sacred pillars. He cut down the wooden image and broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For until those days, the children of Israel burned incense to it and called it Nehushtan. Now, just real quickly, the bronze serpent that, that Moses had made, you know, some 700 years earlier, they took the bronze serpent that God gave them to bring healing, and then they turned it into a, um, uh, an, an idol. Mm -hmm. And they begin to worship the mm -hmm. thing rather than the creator of the thing. Mm -hmm. And so Hezekiah comes in, he's getting rid of all pagan worship, all of this nonsense, and he's, he's being a man of God. It goes on and says, he trusted in the Lord God of Israel, listen to this, so that after him there was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor who were before him. That would include King David himself. So Hezekiah is like a man of God. He is, yeah. he is a king's king. Mm -hmm. For he held fast to the Lord, he did not depart from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord had commanded Moses. Listen to this. The Lord was with him. He prospered wherever he went and he rebelled against the king of Assyria. You need to remember that and did not serve the king of Assyria. He subdued the Philistines as far as Gaza and its territory from uh, the watchtower to the fortified city. And so just, just some background here. He is an amazing, amazing man of God He's stripping down pagan idol worship places and he's doing exactly what God would call a great leader to do. Now, let's move on from 2 Kings and look at what 2 Chronicles said. This is 2 Chronicles 32 verse one and then Sarah's gonna skip to verse seven and eight. So check this out. After these deeds of faithfulness, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered Judah. He encamped against the fortified cities, thinking to win them over to himself. And then Hezekiah said in 7 and 8, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismayed before the king of Assyria, nor before all the multitude that is with him. For there are more with us than with him. With him is the arm of the flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people were strengthened by the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Honey, to tell the people what you just told me a few minutes ago, just how important that last well, part is. Yeah, you guys just think, the people were strengthened by the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Well, one other thing in regards to that is that we are kings and priests, mm -hmm. it says in the New Testament, right? So you guys, when we encourage and speak the truth to our friends face to face, eye to eye, there's something that happens, right? You've experienced it yourself, I'm sure, when somebody looks straight at you and says, don't be fearful, Sarah. Don't be fearful, Terry. Don't be fearful, whoever you might be, but be strengthened. Trust God. He's bigger. He's better. And there's an innumerable 
amount that are with us, that are encamped around right. us, than those that are flexing their arms of flesh, right? right. So there's just something about speaking words of encouragement, you life. guys. Speak life over one another. Don't shrink back. Speak the truth with boldness. And you yourself would be strengthened too because it is the heart and nature yeah. of the Holy Spirit himself yeah. to strengthen. It's not his nature to defeat or bring low. It's his nature to bring truth and strength and power. That's right. Right? Yeah, we're living in days, man. We've got to encourage one another, bless one another. There's too many people trying to tear one another down. Yeah. Man, let's speak the truth of God's word over one another and let's watch people get strengthened. So let's back up now a little bit. Check this out. So Hezekiah does all of these amazing things in 2 Kings chapter 18. Then 2 Chronicles 32 tells us, after these deeds of faithfulness, now this is important. Hezekiah is crushing it, man. He's doing awesome. And it is after these deeds of faithfulness mm -hmm. that the enemy comes in. The king of Assyria comes in mm -hmm. to enter Judah and to encamp against them, thinking he's gonna destroy and demolish them. Listen, it's after these deeds of, of um, faithfulness. Mm -hmm. This has been said so many times, it's worth repeating. Listen to this, new level, new devil. Mm -hmm. Hezekiah goes to a new level of obedience, of pressing into God, of tearing down idolatrous places of worship. Mm -hmm. he, he's going for it with God. And after these deeds of faithfulness, what happens? It gets the devil's attention big time. Mm -hmm. And it's after these deeds of faithfulness that the devil comes to steal, kill, destroy, take captive, plunder, just doing what he does. Well, we're gonna get there in yeah. just a minute, but I want you to see that. Man, when you, when you obey God and walk in his ways, I know we don't like to think about this, Get ready, your new level is gonna produce a new devil mm -hmm. because he's gonna do whatever he can to silence you, to shut you up, to shut you down, and don't be surprised where that devil comes from. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised whose mouth speaks it, whoever posts it or types it or whatever it is. Don't be surprised. New level, new devil, mm -hmm. don't let it get you. Mm -hmm. It's after deeds of faithfulness that the enemy comes in. But again, what Sarah said a minute ago, what do we need to remember? We need to remember that there's more for us mm -hmm. than are against us. Mm -hmm. With the enemy, listen to me, it's the arm of the flesh. But what, is, what does Hezekiah understand? With us is God himself who's come to help us, he said, and to fight our battles for us. Mm -hmm. Don't ever lose sight of that. I'm gonna talk to you more about that in just a minute. But it's so important for you to understand as you're going through your attack by the, by the devil himself, the enemy of your soul, mm -hmm. don't ever forget there's more for you than are against you. Mm -hmm. Believe it, receive it, walk in it, have confidence, be encouraged by it. I don't give a rip about what people say. I don't give a rip about it. I know that if I'm walking with integrity and truth, whatever that devil looks like, it's gonna come back on him and God's gonna fight for me. I love that about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, again, well, we, it's so worth saying, just getting strengthened mm -hmm. by the word. The word, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, Ephesians chapter mm -hmm. six, part of our armor, it's the only offensive weapon that's mentioned. Mm -hmm. The sword of the spirit. Man, listen, you're either gonna have a sword by knowing what God's word really, really says and, and, and appropriating that in your life, or you're gonna have some kind of little butter knife by not knowing the word. You need a sword, not a butter knife. Mark that down, man. Get the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. All right, so there's, there's a little bit of background here for us. Uh, we're just going to look at this next one or two verses now in Isaiah 36. Again, all three passages of scripture tell this story from a unique angle. Isaiah chapter 36, verse one. Here we go. Now it came to pass in the 14th year of King Hezekiah that Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah 
and he took them, all right? He came up against. Now, we've said this thus far, but I wanna tell it to you again. Ephesians chapter six, verses 10 through 12. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Why? So that you can stand against, listen to me, the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. I remember Larry Lee used to say, do you realize the devil is a wily devil? Mm -hmm. It means he's a, a scheming, mm -hmm. a planning, mm -hmm. a beguiling, and a seducing devil. He's working things in the background yeah. to come up against us, mm -hmm. but we need to, man, we need to put on the armor of God mm -hmm. so we can stand against his trickery and his plans and his demonic plots that are coming our way. Because we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. See, when the enemy comes at you with, uh, comes against you with people, we, we tend to focus on the person. Listen, it's the spirit behind the person. Mm -hmm. It's the spirit that the person has, has agreed with and cooperated with mm -hmm. that is um, working through them and we, we can't fight the person, we've gotta fight the spirit at work in the person. And that can take a lot of different um, um, uh, approaches right. and ways, and we're gonna look at those yeah. when we talk about securing our victory. Mm -hmm. But I just wanna remember, remind you what the mm -hmm. scripture says. We don't fight against flesh and blood, but who are we fighting and wrestling with? Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. Paul was aware of the devil fighting against him yeah. through people, mm -hmm. okay? What else? 2 Corinthians 10.3 says that, of course, we walk in the flesh, but we don't war according to the flesh. And here, here's what you need to know about this. Warring according to the flesh means that you're trying to use what did Hezekiah say about, king, um, uh, about uh, the king of Assyria, Sennacherib? He said he's coming in the arm of the flesh. Mm -hmm. We're not coming with the arm of the flesh. We're coming in the strength of God's spirit. So we walk in the flesh, but we don't war according to the flesh. Let me give you another great verse. Second Corinthians 2.11 says this, pay attention to this, that we cannot be ignorant of the devil's devices, mm -hmm. his schemes, mm -hmm. his plots, plans, purposes, and trickery. You can't be ignorant of that. We're, we're, we don't want you to be ignorant. We want to expose the enemy. We want you to secure your victory. That's what this whole thing is about. So we're 20 minutes in. It's time to have communion this morning. But here's what I want you to do, man. Read through these passages of scripture. Read 2 Kings 18. Go ahead, read 2 Chronicles uh, uh, chapter uh, 32. Read Isaiah chapter 36 and 37, and then we're gonna unpack these things together. But man, please share these words. Okay, I've gotta share one thing. Come on, super, do it. Super on my heart. Okay, Romans 5, you guys, says this. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is, who is given to us. So, you guys, peace. Peace is such a gift during yeah. tribulation mm -hmm. and the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. But I want to bring it back super quick to you need the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You absolutely, in this day and in this hour, you need discernment because the devil is so tricky yeah. and he's so wily and he shows up speaking through people that seemingly know Christ, yeah. but they're manipulative and they're seducing spirits, That's just right. like we were talking about. That's right. You need the Holy Spirit and discernment to That's go, right. uh, 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 red flag, red flag. Yeah. So Romans chapter five, verses one through five mm -hmm. is what Sarah just uh, read right there. Fantastic stuff. 
Let's go ahead now and partake of communion this morning. Go ahead and get your bread in your cup. If you're new to us, this is something that we do every single broadcast. We love to, to end it by having communion together. And especially this morning, I was reminded, Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 says that they overcame the accuser, the enemy, the devil. They overcame him by what? The blood, blood of, of the, the lamb. lamb, the word of our testimony. And the third part that people don't like to talk about huh. is that we love not our own lives even, even unto, unto death. death. Right. Okay, so... We're gonna overcome the enemy. You're gonna overcome the enemy. Mm -hmm. If I gotta reach you there and grab you by the shirt tails and just come on, man, you're gonna mm -hmm. overcome. You're gonna make it. You're gonna be strong. We're exposing mm -hmm. the enemy. We're gonna defeat him in Jesus' name. You're gonna walk and live in the power of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take communion together right now, beloved. Father, we thank you for the shed blood and the broken body of Jesus because it is health and strength and life to us. It is what assures not just the forgiveness of sin, but it assures our victory here in this life. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, as we press into this study over the next week, Lord, may you make yourself real to us. God, may you be powerful and strong in us and through us. And for every person that's struggling and hurting right now, God, bless and strengthen them. May this word strengthen them and encourage them, oh God, in Jesus' name. Now bless, we pray, the bread and the cup, health, strength, and life to us in Jesus' mighty name. And God's overcoming people said, amen and amen. Let's partake together. God bless you, friends. We will see you tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Central Time. We'll be back in our own kitchen tomorrow. I want to remind you this Friday, uh, my new blog is going to be going out. And so make sure you sign up, go to steveberger.org and uh, lots happening, good stuff happening. Let's expose the enemy and let's secure our victory. We love you and bless you today in the name of Jesus and God's people said, amen, amen. amen. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye guys.